So according to logic, it's 8.9 milliseconds round trip and smart has it clocked identically. So now I'm gonna change my clock to 96K and we're gonna measure it. I've now lowered the buffer size down to 64 and we're gonna run our same test. Hey, how's it going? This is Jay with Kinetic. And in this video, we're gonna be running a series of latency tests on the brand new Yamaha DM3. Now, I know what you're thinking, Jay, the latency tests, those are kind of boring. Why are you doing that? I'm doing that for a couple reasons. One, I'm a big nerd. And two, one of the big selling features of the DM3 is that it boasts ultra low latency. And I have to be honest with you before showing you all of my results, it's absolutely true. Yamaha outdid themselves this time. And if this is any indication of the future of technology, latency is coming way, way down. It's pretty exciting to see that and be a part of that and watch the technology grow right in front of our eyes. Another really cool part of the DM3 is that the console can be set to 48K or 96K. Not a lot of consoles offer that, but once again, this is showing this is the, the path that technology is moving in and it's fun to be a part of that. All of my tests are gonna be ran at 48K and then those same tests are gonna be ran at 96K. If you wanna see my control for this, this tests, what, what, what is the control system that I use to verify my results against the testing and make sure that, hey, I'm doing the right thing, this is a sound scientific method, and this is a good practice of testing latency, you can watch my control testing video here. Also, I've taken all of my results and I've put that into a data sheet. And if you wanna see the data sheet on all of these latency tests, you can click on my website in the description below. There are gonna be two types of tests that we run on the DM3. The first series of tests are gonna be testing latency of the analog inputs. That first test is going to be how long it takes for a signal to enter the console on an analog input, go into a mix, and then exit from an analog output. The second analog test is going to be a return onto a channel. And that may be a little bit of advanced routing for a lot of people, but if you plan on sending a signal into an outboard piece of gear, or returning a group onto a channel, calculating that delay that you are creating would be pretty good information. The second set of latency tests that we are gonna run is using the DM3 as a USB interface. And as anybody knows that has used an, a USB interface like a Scarlet or uh, a Tascam, or uh, even like the SSL one, like you're, you're always gonna have a, a measurable amount of latency that you need to compensate for somewhere. I'm going to run all of late, the USB latency tests, treating this as a USB interface at 48K and at 96K with logic. And I'm going to run all of those tests with different buffer sizes, starting at 128, 64, and 32. So let's jump right in. Let's do some tests. And if I go here, we're gonna start with 48K set. I have an input channel coming to the DM3. Uh, I'm sorry, I have signal going to an input channel. That input channel is routed to a mix and that mix is routed out of an Omni on a back on the back of the console. This focus right right here is taking tone from my sound bullet. I am getting a uh, reference from that tone on input two of the focus right and input one of the focus right is the return from the DM3. So again, if you wanna see my process on calculating latency, but before, if you just wanna check my values and see how I'm getting that, click that video. It's also in the description below. But let's do that latency test right now. And here's my measurement, here's my reference. 0.73 milliseconds. So we're gonna log that. 0.73, that's really low. That's substantially less than the QL1, which I had clocked at 2.23. So it, it makes total sense. They're also marketing the DM3 as a USB interface. So you're gonna want that really low latency. 
Now I'm gonna change my clock to 96K and we're gonna measure it. And in theory, the latency should be less, right? So let's give that a try. We're gonna jump back over here to smart. And now I'm going to hit find delay, 0.35. So that's almost half of what it was at 48. And that makes sense, right? So cool, really, really low latency, extremely less than I thought uh, the DM3 would do. And compared to the QL1, it makes sense, right? You may have this in, in a studio, you may be using it for USB IO where the QL1 is simply uh, for broadcast and live sound reinforcement. Also the ability to have the DM3 run at 96K, it's pretty cool. And for this next test, we are going to do a return on a channel on the DM3. And this is pretty cool. I can go into the routing and things like that in the future why this is a fun trick. But what we are doing is taking an analog signal in on input one. I'm routing that to a mix, sending that mix out of the console. It is then returning to a different channel on the console. And then that is being routed out of an Omni to a destination. This allows us to put a group uh, it's a return. Maybe you're going into outboard gear or something like that. Um, we can get into the why that's a cool technique later, but let's check the latency. And once again, we go over here to smart. Sorry, uh, I'm on a different machine and screen share is being weird. And this should be double the initial latency and the initial latency with this console at, with the word clock set to 96K, from our previous tests, we remember it was 0.35, and because we are essentially doing uh, twice that amount of work on that channel, the latency is pretty much double. It's 0.73, which makes sense. Cool. Now we are going to try this one more time, this time with the DM3 set to 48K. And latency is 1.46 milliseconds. For this next test, we are going to test the latency of the Yamaha DM3 as an IO device and we are gonna make some buffer changes and affect that latency and see what actually comes out. We are using Logic, and once again, I'm using a tone generator, and I am sending, I'm splitting that tone generator and sending it to the right channel on my focus right, which is connected to Smart. That is our reference, and then that same signal is routed to this DM3. We are taking it in on Logic, and then we are monitoring it back out of the DM3. Uh, so it's coming back onto a channel and then that channel is getting routed back out of the DM3, back over to my Scarlet, and that is the measurement. And Smart is gonna give us that value between, the both, between both of those. And just to make sure that this is doing what we're doing, let's hear some drums. With the pink noise in there. Cool, we're gonna kill that. So we are starting this test with, command there, a buffer size of 128. So at 128, and we have a latency of 11.56. I've now lowered the buffer size down to 64, and we're gonna run our same test, and it is now 8.9 milliseconds round trip. That's pretty good. And according to, wow, so according to logic, it's 8.9 milliseconds round trip, and Smart has it clocked identically, so we know our DAW isn't lying or bullshitting to us. And I would lower the buffer to 32, I hit apply, and it is telling me 7.6 milliseconds, and I hit find delay, 7.54 milliseconds. So logic rounds it up a little bit, and in reality, it's even better than what the prediction is. So logic is telling me 
7.6 milliseconds with the buffer size of 32 samples and smart has it clocked at 7.54 it's pretty cool in all of our last tests uh we were running this as a usb interface at 48k now we are going to set it to 96k and do the same tests with the same buffer size i have logic set to match at 96k and we're going to start with a buffer size of 128 and see what the round trip latency is. So according to logic, it's 8.9. And let's see. It's 8.35. So it's actually, it's actually better than what logic is going to tell is telling us. And let's change this to 64 apply. And running that set test with 60, 64 samples or a buffer size of 64, seven milliseconds. It's pretty good. So logic is telling us 7.6 uh, round trip and smart has it clocked at seven and at 32. So our buffer size is set to 32 samples we are going to 6.35 which is actually better every single test at 96k exceeded uh the resulting round trip latency that logic was going to say so 6.35 with a buffer size of 32 samples is pretty good most people aren't going to run things that low. So again, it's just at 64, it's a good place to be. One more time for good measure, seven milliseconds. This is great. This is great for that. Uh, at first I thought this was just going to be kind of another TF, but the latency that you get from this is extremely low. And having the ability to run everything at 96 is pretty awesome. Remember to like and subscribe.